Alex Howard hits the transfer portal, the Aggies are going to have to go get another linebacker. You are Locked On Aggies, your daily podcast on the Texas A&M Aggies, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome on in to Locked On Aggies. I'm your host, Andrew Stefaniak. Thanks for making Locked On Aggies your first listen every single day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150, win or lose. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm recording this in the evening of the 15th. You'll be seeing it the morning of the 16th. And Alex Howard, Texas a and linebacker who recently transferred in from Youngstown State, says that he plans to put his name in the portal. When I'm recording this, of course, he still hasn't done that because it opens on the 16th. But he is planning to put his name in the portal. I'm a little bit shocked. A little bit shocked by this. He's a player who all we've heard is good things. You know, all we've heard is good things. I was really excited about him. I thought that he had a shot to sneak into the starting lineup. I thought that's how good he was, to be honest with you. I mean, the tape was really good. We can't, he came in, we heard some good things, and then it, I guess it just wasn't working out. So now the question is with Howard planning to leave, where do you go from here? There's two answers. The first answer is Florida transfer Scooby Williams. Scooby Williams has been taking reps with the ones, he's looked good, everything sounds good there. And of course, you know, we've got, don't forget, you still got Terry and York, so we feel pretty good about the room. The question is going to be who's next to York and then the depth. And that's what we're going to get into. So I, you know, it was funny. At first, I predicted Alex Howard to be the guy next to York. Then the more we heard about Scooby Williams, the more I bought into the hype surrounding him. And I'm kind of glad I did because now it, with, with Howard, you know, planning to um, to leave, it sounds like Williams is probably going to be the guy. But another player that has been playing well is Damian Sanford, you know, and a guy that we haven't talked a lot about. But I mean, a player played some snaps last year, uh, played some football, you know, I mean, played a little bit more experience than some of, you know. You're going to have a lot of linebackers on this roster. You're going to have a couple of the older guys that I just I don't see getting on the field. Then you're going to have York. Then you're going to have Scooby Williams. And then the young guys, the true freshmen. Some are here now. Some are coming later. But I think that Scooby Williams wins this job. But it's good to hear that Sanford is making this interesting because you need another body. We talked about that all the time depth in sec football in college football in anything depth anything in in a in a beer drinking softball league depth is everything you got to have depth and i now have depth concerns you know i i'm going to be honest with you i i think that San, once again sanford makes me feel better he makes me feel better about the room him kind of you know being a breakout candidate but I, I don't feel good about some of the old, the other older guys, the young guys. I feel good about, but I don't want them out on the field. We got to remember. I think we Texas A&M fans. We got spoiled by what happened with Taryn York. That is not going to happen every time. Y'all know, y'all every day as you're locked on Aggies know. I gripe and gripe and gripe about true freshmen. You don't want them starting in the SEC unless something crazy happens, and. You, you know, York, it was kind of funny. Right before the start of the season, we heard this hype. Oh, Terry and York, he's playing well. Could he sneak into the starting lineup? And then he is the best player in the history of the game of football. You know, like that's what happened with York. That's not going to happen all the time. Some of these guys are going to come in, journey again, and lock heart. The upside is there. There's no debate to it. But are they going to come in and – be legitimate dudes this year. I don't know about that. It's going to, it's going to take a lot of hype to talk me into that. 
So that's going to be interesting. But you got to remember with Scooby Williams, this dude was extremely talented, extremely talented coming out of high school. His career at Florida, I'm trying to think of, of a, a word you could call it. I think it was, I don't know if I would say, maybe underwhelming to where it was like, okay, he was out there. He was playing in the, SEC, in the SEC, but I don't think he ever lived up to the expectations of how highly ranked he was. So an example of that, and this is going to give some folks, um, you know, some, some terrible flashbacks of, of conversations we had like this last year, but kind of reminds me of Tony Grimes. Now <clears throat> I know Tony Grimes literally, I did he even like, he didn't even play a snap, right? Did he at Texas? Uh, maybe he did. Maybe he played two, whatever. But you know, Tony Grimes, when he came from North Carolina, a former five-star corner who had a so-so career at North Carolina, I think so-so is a good way to define it. Wasn't great, wasn't terrible, was in the middle. And I think the same can be said about Scooby Williams. I think he went to Florida as a super highly ranked guy, and he was fine. He wasn't amazing. He wasn't awful. He was fine. He was a player that maybe could use a new place to call home. And you see a guy like, you know, his coach, Coach Bateman comes over, and sometimes a fresh start helps. I was 0 for 1 on my fresh start helps take with with Grimes, but I ain't going over 2. I really think that just change of scenery, getting the perspective perspective of some other coaches can really help a player. And I'm hoping that's what happens with Williams. So, while I'm glad that Sanford has separated himself as a legit dude in this room competing with Williams. And I'm also glad that Williams is a legit dude on this roster and has a chance to start next to York. I've got depth concerns. And you know, what's funny before Alex Howard even announced, Hey, I'm going to hit the portal. I had depth concerns in the linebacker room. So here's the deal. You got to go get a linebacker. I wouldn't be upset if you went and got two. Even if they're guys, I think some of the players that are the most undervalued in the transfer portal are those type of guys, the players who come in with one-year eligibility left that have played some college football somewhere just to give you depth. Players like that, I think, are so undervalued in college football. And go get two players like that. I mean, the fans might not even really ever know their names, but if someone were to get hurt, you go get two guys, one year eligibility, you'll play a lot of college football. I think that's valuable. I also, I, and the reason there's some positions where, okay, I'll give you an example. Um, I, I don't have a great example because Texas a and done a good job of a lot of depth or a lot of old talent and young talent pretty much every room. But so I'll give you, an, I'll try and give you an example. Let's say, Let's say the uh, running back room didn't have – yeah, the running back room is probably a great example, actually, because you didn't take a running back in this class. Running back room is a good example. You know, you've got some older guys in Moss, uh, Daniels, and you got the, the second-year player in Owens, right? So you've got some – you've got a younger guy, a little, couple older, a little bit older guys, but you don't have a freshman. The running back room is a position where I'd say, hey, maybe go get a guy – who can give you um, a, 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 a true freshman that wasn't happy with the first location or a sophomore, go get a younger player that you can see how they develop. I think that you have a lot of young talent in the linebacker room to where this is the opposite. I'd say, I don't think you need to go get any young guys. I'd go get some experienced veterans who have played a lot of college football that just want to come for one more year of college football. Maybe they want to play in the SEC, whatever it is. Go get a guy or two like that. That'll just come in and and, and give you a, a be a role player for your football team if you have some injuries, but they give you experienced depth. That's what I would say. Go get in the portal with Alex Howard leaving, which once again came as a complete, complete shock to me. I, I hadn't heard anything about this. I wasn't expecting this. Frankly, I was excited to see what he was going to be able to do this year. So, um, best of luck to Howard going forward. But yeah, I, I feel good that Sanford's stepping up, and I feel good that, that Scoob Williams can be a starter for this team next to York, but I do think you got to go get a guy or two in the transfer portal. Ladies and gentlemen, the spring game, it's here in a couple days. A few days, not a couple, a few days, excuse me. But what are the storylines that we are going to be paying attention to 
in this game. We're going to talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, I want to tell you about our friends over at FanDuel. It's playoff time in the NBA and NHL. Baseball is in full swing, and FanDuel is your place to bet on every game. Right now, new customers get $150 in bonus bets guaranteed. That's $150 win or lose. Bet on everything from slap shots to home runs to slam dunks, all on an app that's safe, secure, and easy to use. What are you waiting for? Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on. Make your first bet an automatic win. FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Also want to tell you about our new friends over at Monopoly Go. We've all been there. Either as a player or a fan, it's halftime and the scoreboard is not looking good. You're feeling low, not sure your team, you or your team can pull out a win. That's when you dig deep, lift your head up, and say to yourself, time to get back in the game. Pull off some bank heists and take as much of my friend's money as I possibly can. That's right. The smash hit mobile game Monopoly Go lets you compete with your friends to get the most riches in the biggest empire. It's the Monopoly you love, but on your phone anytime with tons of new twists, including leaderboards to compare your progress to your buddies. There's so much to do. Play on countless dynamic Monopoly boards. Make your friends bankrupt by smashing their landmarks with a wrecking ball. Charge other players rent for your iconic properties. You can even work with your friends to crack open community chests and in tournaments to claim rewards and climb the leaderboard. So get back out there, put your game face on, and download Monopoly Go. Now free on the App Store or Google Play. Spring game is almost here, ladies and gentlemen. I'm excited. This is going to be a really, really fun day. I mean, it's going to be a fun weekend. We got Texas saying in baseball, we've got this spring game coming up. There's just a lot to be excited about this weekend, and I'm really looking forward to this game. Now, before we get into the storylines, I want to add a few caveats about the spring game. First thing, we, let's all agree, packed. We're not going to overreact or underreact to what happens. I think that sometimes folks can be overly concerned and so, uh, with with, with um, things that maybe aren't concerns, and sometimes folks can be under concerned with things that are concerns. I think it goes both ways. And the goal here at Locked On Aggies, we're not going to do that. We're going to give you our honest opinion and break this game down. What I saw and hear what y'all saw. I am really darn excited about this football game. But storylines. Number one, quarterback play. Listen, I'm a little nervous. I feel like I'm I'm the guy who took a flyer in the second round of the fantasy football draft, and I'm like, man, I don't want my friends to make fun of me because I did something silly. I have laid my claim to Connor Wigman for a very, very long time, and I still am in the position that I think I have done a good job with it. And listen, it wasn't a rocket science take. He was a five-star recruit, okay? it's I'm not – I didn't like – pick a transfer two star to be the starting quarterback. You know, I didn't do any of that. So my point is I like Connor Wigman a lot. I think he's gonna be a really good player for the Aggies. If he can stay healthy, I think he can be one of the best quarterbacks in the SEC. Those of you everydayers here at Locked On Aggies know that. I've said that time and time again. But what do he and Reed, Marcel Reed and Jalen Henderson, what are they gonna do? I I'm high on Connor Wigman. I am high on Marcel Reed's upside. I think that him and Henderson are very similar right now, but I think the upside, in my opinion, I lean toward Marcel Reed, but all three of these dudes can play football. All three of these dudes, I think it started a handful of SEC schools. That's how good they are. Power four, which power, whatever, power seven, whatever we're going to get used to start having to say. But point is, a lot of these, these quarterbacks, all three of them can be starters at a lot of schools in the country. So I want to see who plays well because the sample size, and you got to remember, let's be honest with ourselves. The sample size for Connor Wigman isn't even huge. We saw three and a half games last year. And then what was it? Three and a half around that same amount of games in the the year prior. We, We don't have a massive sample size for Connor Wigman. It's not like he's played a full season. You know, he's played what, seven, eight games. You could say played half of some games. Like there's, He's not fully proven either. So what but what I'm getting at is he is 
he has played the most snaps compared to Henderson or Marcel Reed. Marcel Reed played one, played one game. I think Henderson, I'm forgetting, I think he played three before going down with the injury. Maybe it was four, but point here is, the point here is, I'm excited to see what this quarterback play looks like. I think Connor Brigham's going to have a good day. And the other thing to pay attention to within this storyline is quarterback health. How healthy is Connor Wigman? Is he good to go? I know that we've had some concerns about his health. I know that they, you know, I, I, the way the coaching staff has been conversating about his health is a little bit concerning to me. It's a little bit okay. Is he maybe not as healthy as we th- as we think? I want to see that. How does he move? I know that obviously he's not going to take off and run because if they just, you know, there's no tackling on the quarterbacks. But I'm anxious to see what does he look like mobility wise. Obviously, I'm not concerned about Henderson's injury with it being, you know, an upper body. Thing. It's not not worried about an ankle or anything with him. So, um, and then Marcel Reed, can he shine? So, quarterback play is going to be huge in this game. I think that we're going to find out if this is a legit quarterback battle or not when this spring game goes on. Because I think you're just going to be able. Now, it's going to be a quarterback battle. It's not going to be over after the spring game. But I do think that if Wigman just looks worlds, leaps and bounds better than everybody else, then the conversation will kind of go away a little bit. But if Reed and or Henderson outplays them, then this could get a lot more interesting. So that is my number one storyline. The number two storyline is another one that we all know how important it's going to be, and that is the battle for the secondary spots. So uh, Coach Elko said the other day that, you know, you've got some players banged up. You've got some players that have looking uh, looked good, but you know uh, Ratcliffe, the the transfers played well. You got Bryce Anderson going back to playing safety. There's a lot going on here, and I, I we're not going to name names in here because y'all know the names. What I want to talk about in this conversation isn't as much names. It's somebody needs to separate themselves. I don't know about the health of Des Ricks. I saw that he's a little banged up, but I haven't seen anywhere if he's going to play or not. If anyone's seen anything on that, let me know in the YouTube comments. But um, I did see Coach say he's a little bit banged up. But it sounds like some other players are are really looking good. I'm anxious, incredibly anxious to see what this secondary looks like because I do think it's going to make and or break this season. Um, so I want to see somebody step up uh, when it comes to the secondary. I, I want to see somebody step up and really prove, hey, we got this. You know, we're going to be okay. Or do we leave this going, oh, man, the concern from last year is going to carry over and be a concern from next season. That is what I want to figure out. The next thing I'm paying attention to are the running backs, and most importantly, Reuben Owens. Can Reuben Owens separate himself? I haven't seen any injury news on the running backs. I assume, you know, um, I assume everybody's going to be good to go there. Moss, I, I, we, I think that Moss and Owens are going to be one of the best one-two punches in the SEC this year. But I think that Owens is going to separate himself. I just the videos I've seen of him at practice, he looks so darn explosive. He looks good catching the football. He looks good running. I can't wait to see him making people miss. I think Coach Elko is excited about him. I think Coach Klein is excited about having him in, um, having him ready to rock and roll. Have him having him as a weapon. So I'm really excited to see what these running backs look like. I think it's going to be a room where somebody separates themselves in this spring game. And it's doesn't. And then the question is, Hey, do we need to use the portal there? That'll be a question too, because you know, you're an injury or two away from this getting, getting thinner and thinner at this position, especially knowing you didn't bring in a running back in this class. So in this, uh, excuse me, recruiting class or high school recruiting class. So um, that is what I'm going to be paying attention to in the running back room. Next, we're going to talk about the receivers. Now that the Aggies suffered a significant injury in that room, what do we expect for the receivers in the spring game? We'll talk about that coming up right here on Locked on Aggies. But first, we'll tell you about our friends over at LinkedIn Jobs. When you're hiring for your small business, you want to find quality professionals that are right for the role. That's why you have to check out LinkedIn Jobs. LinkedIn Jobs has the tools to help find the right professionals for your team faster and for free. LinkedIn isn't just another job board. LinkedIn helps you hire professionals you can't find anywhere else, even those who aren't actively searching for a new job but might be open to a perfect role. In a given month, over 70% of LinkedIn users 
don't visit other landing job sites. So if you're not looking on LinkedIn, you're looking in the wrong place. On LinkedIn, 86% of small businesses get a qualified candidate within 24 hours. Hire professionals like a professional on LinkedIn. I love LinkedIn. It is the best place to go find new employees or find a job for, you know, if, if you're looking for employees for your small or large business, LinkedIn is the place to do it. If you're looking for a job that fits you, fits what you like to do, LinkedIn is the place to do it. Go check out LinkedIn Jobs. Post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on college. That's linkedin.com slash locked on college to post your job for free. Terms and conditions do apply. So the wide receiver room is going to be interesting. Now that, which we talked about yesterday, the day before, let's see if it was yesterday. I'll flip my sheet over. Um. Yes, it was yesterday. Jabri Barber, the transfer receiver from Troy, has had foot surgery, and he's going to miss several months, which I still haven't gotten clarification on what several months means. Do we anticipate him being back ready to rock and roll for the season? That is all going to be extremely interesting, talking about next or this upcoming season. But if he's not ready to go, if he's not going to play for two or three months, I think you got to go get somebody because, you know, you've got the transfer Cyrus Allen, and then you've still, of course, got Moose and Noah Thomas. You got Micah Tease. You got uh, Jaday Walker. I, I, you, you, I, you feel good about the players. I like some of these freshmen that are going to be coming in, some of the freshmen here now. I like this room as a whole, but you got some young guys, and you are an injury to your way in the position where there's three guys out there, sometimes more. You know, you're an injury away. You're an injury away from being in a really, really bad spot. And that is kind of my point here. I don't hate the idea of going to get another receiver in the portal, but I am excited to see how these guys look in the spring game. Another, you know, hey, someone needs to separate themselves. Who is going to be the wide receiver on the wide receiver one on this team? I think there's a bunch of different names it could be. Somebody needs to prove, hey, it's going to be me. And that's what I want to see in the spring game is I want to see somebody separate themselves from the other candidates. The other thing I want to see is just, you know, hey, let's call some good plays, Kong Kong. I want to be excited about the play calling. And I know that the play calling in the spring game isn't going to really matter when it comes to the start of the season. And I, I get that. It's true. But I just would love to see some legitimately good play calling that we go, man, that was fun. That made a ton of sense. I'm excited about that play call. You know, and, and am I going to go, oh, I'm concerned about Colin Klein. I didn't love that play. No, we're not going to do that in the spring game. But I would love to be like, man, Colin Klein in the spring game called a great game. So I'm excited about that. I also want to see Nick Scorton live up to the hype. I've talked about that a ton. I, like I talked about with Connor Wigman, I have said a lot of good things about Nick Scorton because I think he'll be one of the best pass rushers in college football this season, as he was last year. And I want to see him prove that. I want to see this defensive line, this front seven, get pressure as a whole. Um, I think that's going to be key. Are you going to be able to get pressure on the quarterback? Last year, Texas a was one of the best teams in all college football when it came to getting pressure on the quarterback. Can you do that again? And, you know, I think Texas A&M is going to have a really good defensive line this year, a front seven this year. So on the flip side of that, yes, I want to see Nick Scorton play well and I want to see you get pressure. But the offensive line. You're going to be going, you're going to be without Bryce Foster. So you're going to have some of those centers, which will be another interesting thing to pay attention to. Can the transfer, can Shanahan, can one of these guys step up and make you feel better about the backup you got at center when Fro when Foster is back from um, track and field? But this offensive line will be going against one of the best, um, one of the best defensive lines, in my opinion, in college football. So how can you handle it? Can you how can you handle it? Can you can these offensive linemen separate themselves? I'm really anxious to see that. I think that can you see this group hold their own? I do not want to see the offensive line get pushed around this entire game. That will, because here's the deal. I have said it time and time again, as you everydayers know, if this team struggles on the offensive line, I don't know how they are going to be super successful when it comes to moving the football. Offensive line 
play, solid offensive line play leads to solid offense because your quarterback needs time to throw the ball. The receivers need time to get open. And then, of course, your running backs need holes to run through. And if you can't, if you aren't provided that by the offensive line, your offense isn't going to work. So that's going to be something I'm paying attention to as well. And we'll talk about this game all week. We'll talk about the transfer portal all week, which is opening up today. It's going to be interesting to see which Aggies jump in, who does Coach Elko and company pursue. Um, Howard, once again, I assume by the time y'all are watching this, his name will officially be in the portal. Um, when he announced he was planning to leave, he couldn't officially do it. So you, I assume it'll be in there by now, but um, I hate losing him. It's going to be really interesting to see what happens with the linebacker room, and it's going to be really interesting to see as a whole what the coaching staff does in the transfer portal. So we're going to be monitoring that monitoring that all week here at Locked on Aggies. But that's going to do it for today's episode. I really appreciate you all being here. Uh, let me know thoughts on Alex Howard leaving. Let me know thoughts on the um, some storylines that you all are paying attention to for the spring game. I'm really anxious to hear you alls thoughts on that as well. I hope everybody has an outstanding rest of their day today. Really appreciate you all being here every day. And we will see you tomorrow.